One of the most interesting problem spaces in all of AI, in my opinion, is how we actually interact with large language models. Sure, we have some of the most powerful open source models we've ever been able to use available right now, and tools like cloud, which make it possible for basically anyone to have massive amounts of knowledge available right at their fingertips. However, the way we interact with them is still pretty primitive. Basically, it's limited to formatting English in different ways, sometimes using special closures, to sort of hint at what we want a machine to do. But a stealth startup in SF called BRX AI is thinking completely differently about this. And they've actually started to develop a new language that is large language model first. And the idea is it's a new way to interact with large language models at a much lower level. Some would say even below the tokenizer, which is pretty cool. So this leads us to the question of what are tokenizers? What do large language models actually think in? And if we reduce the distance between English, a tokenizer, and the core model itself, what are some of the performance gains and enhanced abilities we might be able to see with that? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So what you're looking at now is an interview that Robert Scoble did with one of the engineers at BRX AI at an AI event in San Francisco. And as someone who's lived in San Francisco, uh, both as an engineer and a founder, I can tell you that one of the hardest things is just cutting through noise and finding people who are actually like really working on stuff. And this is an exceptional example. One, because it's a stealth startup and Robert kind of got a scoop here, but also because this is something that's actually quite novel. And I'll link below to Robert's full interview and his Twitter if you wanna learn a little bit more from his perspective. So what's really cool about this is this is rethinking just fundamentally how we interact with large language models. Obviously there's chat, there's voice, and if OpenAI has gotten anything right, even with all the things they got wrong this past week, it's that how we interact with these models directly correlates to user experience. And one thing that's interesting that I would kind of equate this stealth startup to is if you ever used Palm Pilots, there was a time where actually um, writing what was called graffiti was actually faster than typing individual keys on like a digital keyboard. So what's interesting is the idea here is creating an abstraction just a bit lower or basically a tokenizer that tokenizes into another form of English that can basically bake more context into less words and then give you something where you're prompting in a way still in English, but at the same time giving much more context to the underlying model. And in a bit, we'll get into the model that BRX is developing with this technology as a layer on top. And this is one of the screenshots we got of this language. And what's interesting is although they're still in stealth, they're actually already previewing their tokenizer on their website, which I'll link to as well. So if you've dug into how tokenizers work and just how tokens work in AI generally, it's one of the most interesting problems that I think has the most mysticism as well along the, with this technology. Tokenizers can do wild things like instantly converting B64 encoding into English without even telling it it's B64. They can do things like compressing data in ways that some of us still actually don't understand or haven't discovered how they're actually doing it. And tokenizers are the core of kind of AI interface layers because they're the things that take language, turn them into inputs that large language models consume. And then it, they're also how we actually turn what they put out into actual language. So you can see here that this appears to just be kind of a, a some note that was taken about JavaScript. You can see that there are key points in notes and ideally in time, this is the idea is that you could actually speak in this as a human and then interact more quickly with large language models. And one of their developers on Twitter, the one that Robert um, interviewed, has a really interesting way of summing this up. So they're still in stealth and we haven't seen entirely what they're working on, but what they describe this language as is, we want to make it clear as we have uncovered a new form of machine to machine language. Our mindset has always been to build a more efficient communication layer between us and the models more to come. So the best way I think to talk about this is if you've done any kind of programming, basically programming languages are just abstraction layers. So they're a way that you can create logic, turn it into maybe a lower level language like C, and then C is turned into machine code. And you can, in theory, program in machine code, but it's something that's really hard for humans to understand and keep track of, especially when you're putting it through things like compilers. And although the core logic of large language models is linear algebra, Obviously, we, our brains aren't meant to do linear algebra. However, uh, GPUs and accelerators are, and we've built interfaces to actually use that and get knowledge out. Now, the tough thing with each interface layer is we lose energy, time, and performance in each. So in theory, if you could actually improve the performance of this, someone would say you can get more performance, you could interface even faster, and it would even be more efficient. And they hint a little bit more of this on their website. So on BRX AI, they basically say, we're creating a universal format for token interaction across all AI models. The idea is you build once and then run in any compute environment. And that's kind of their downstream 
goals. But right now they're mostly focusing on the tokenizer and what that actually enables. And they're in stealth. So right now they're not really telling us a lot about what they're doing. But what's interesting is you can already use their kind of prompt encoder, which is pretty much their take on a tokenizer using this language markup they have created. So in this case, my prompt was, I'm traveling through space and need direction to reach the nearest star. And their encoded prompt turned this into I echo touring mash space and needing direction a la arrange detonier sticks. Now, what's funny to me is this sounds like the Belter language from The Expanse, which is also just pretty cool. However, obviously they're probably hoping that this is much more complex. And what's cool is you can step into using this in a model. Now, I'm not sure what model they're actually using here, but what's cool is you can use this to go back and forth. And I can also toggle on and off what's going on here. So obviously I don't speak their kind of AI language yet. It would be kind of interesting if I did. But the idea here is it's an interface layer to use with LLMs and make it faster. And in theory, just communicate with computers faster, which I think is pretty cool, especially without having a Neuralink plug directly in my skull. So I'm working on getting an interview with one of the founders of this company. This is the type of startup in stealth that I think SF should be known for and should be known uh, just more of for. It's a very novel, there's a clear application, and clearly the team is incredibly sharp and are excited to be sharing this. So I'm gonna reach out, we're gonna see what we can get, and I'm curious what you guys think. So do you think this new AI native language will really pick up? Do you think things like chat templates or just sticking to different types of models like instruct or chat is maybe a better way to go? Um, would you want to learn kind of an AI native language in order to interact faster? Because I know a lot of people who watch my videos are power users of these models. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something in this video, and if you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.